Good morning, friends. Today I'm going to talk about a chapter, the portrait of a lady. This chapter is in 11th standard, and this is the first chapter of the book Hornbill. Portrait of a lady is a beautiful chapter. It talks about the relationship between a grandmother and her grandson. The story is written by Kushwan Singh. And Kushwan Singh in this story talks about the beautiful memories of his early childhood. Let's talk about the title first. The portrait of a lady. The lady here is the author's grandmother. Portrait means word picture. So Kushwan Singh is just trying to create a picture through words of his grandmother. And of course, I told you that this story is related to his early childhood when he was a child of about five or six years. So it so happened that Kushwan Singh's parents they shifted to the city, and they had to make proper arrangements. And before that. Kushwan Singh and his grandmother, they were left in the village. We presume that he might have been of about five to six years because he was still learning alphabets in the school. Kushwan Singh said that during their stay in the village, he developed a strong bond of friendship with his grandmother. Grandmother she was a typical grandmother, very old and uh, very caring. She used to take all the possible care of the author in the village. And he gives a beautiful description of his grandmother. He says that she was old enough to get older. Or in other words, she was that old that there was hardly any scope left in her becoming older. This story has the span of about 20 years. So say, Kushwan Singh talks about the time when he was of 5 years and then the story expands up to the age of 25 years when his grandmother died. Now I said that for the whole 20 long years, I found, he found his grandmother the same old. She hadn't grown even a day older. So it clearly admits that it was very impossible for me to believe that she had been ever young and pretty because she had seen, he had seen her the same old person for as long as 20 years. He says that she might not have been uh, beautiful. She might not have been pretty, but she was beautiful beautiful by heart and her, his grandmother he, he, she was a typical grandmother having all the traditional qualities of a grandmother she was religious of course by nature but before coming to her, the religious aspect of her nature I would just type, uh, like to talk about her physical appearance she was short slightly bent and she used to hobble around the, in, in the house. Hobbling is uh, walking with, with, with in a manner of a frog kind of. So she put her one hand on her waist to keep the balance. In the other hand, she used to put the keep the rosary. And she used to tell the beads of rosary while making her prayers. So you can see that throughout the day she kept on making prayers. And her prayers were inaudible. Inaudible means, uh, I mean, if, if there is a person right in front of her, then that person might not listen what actually she was saying. But then uh, it was clear that she was saying something as a part of her prayers. So I'm talking about the religious aspect of her nature. She kept on saying her prayers all the time. And she was the one who was not only religious by words, but she was religious by her actions also. Friends, it is commonly said that God loves them 
who love his creations. And if you talk about the creations of God, then all the humans are of course the creations of God. But apart from the humans, the birds, the animals, the plants, everything that we find on the earth, these are the creations of God. So if you are loyal to him, all his creations, if you take care of, uh, of, of other things apart from the humans, you literally, you truly prove yourself to be a true religious person. So there are two instances in the story how she proved herself to be a truly religious person. And I'll come to that later on. So I'll just talk about her religious nature. But before that, uh, there are certain more things which I need to talk right now. She had fair complexion. <clears throat> she had silver locks of hair, that means white hair. And she always used to wear spotless white sari. Now from top to bottom, she was extremely white. And the author compares her to the winter landscapes in the mountains. That means during the winters, if you just look at the top of the mountain, then the mountains are covered by snow, white colored snow. Now the same thing you could find on the face of the grandmother. She, she, I mean, once, once you look at her face, you feel at peace. You feel, you get a sense of uh, kind of uh, contentment. So that was the grandmother, a very agreeable person, a very person with a dignity. So the author says that whenever she used to talk about the plays that she used to play in her childhood, he just took it to be the stories of the prophets. Because it, it was quite undignified on her part to have played the games of games in her childhood. The author also talks about his grandfather. He says that there was a big portrait of his grandfather in, in the drawing room. And his grandfather, he looked as if he was a grand old man of 100 years with white colored loose fitting clothes, white turban and the white beard covering half of his chest. And looking at him, it seemed as if this person could have only grandchildren, not his own children. So typical grandfather, of course he was dead, but his portrait was there in the drawing room, drawing hall. Now he talks about the way his, his grandmother cared for him. He said that our routine started early in the morning. She used to wake him up. She used to get him ready for the school. And she used to provide him the breakfast of thick, stale chapati with butter or ghee spread on that with some sugar also. Now, uh, two terms are there, thick and stale. Stale is something which is prepared a day earlier, not a fresh one. So looking at the grandmother, she was very old and it was, it was, uh, and we can't expect her to wake up early in the morning and make uh, all those chapatis for herself and, and, and her grandson. And one more reason was there. So she used to make those chapatis in the previous evening, a bunch of them, which were used for the dinner, next day, the breakfast and of course the lunch. And she used to pack some chapatis with her while she accompanied the author to the school. So she went, him, went with him to the school because the author's school was in, uh, was in the second part of the second half of the next portion of the village temple. So both of them would go to the school together. She would stay throughout the school hours there while the priest of the temple would teach the children the alphabets and other things, she used to sit in the temple reading the scriptures, the religious texts. When the school was over, both of them would come back to get their home at the steps of the temple or the school which you may call. The stray dogs waited for them. Now this is, this is the uh, action part of being a religious person. She was old, terribly old, unable to cook proper food. But look at the thinking she had, she had for the dogs. 
choose to prepare this much of stale thick chapatis for the dogs and the dogs literally waited for her. So while getting back to her home, she used to provide those chapatis to the village dogs, the stray dogs. Now this is how she cared not only for Kushwat Singh as a child, but she also cared for the village dogs. And doing this, a strong bond of relationship was there between the author and grandmother, which stayed till the death of the grandmother. Now the things changed in their life. The author's parents got settled in the city. They made proper arrangements of author's admission into a school and all. So they called the author and his grandmother to the city. The author says that that was a turning point in our relationship. That was a turning point in our friendship. The author went to an English medium school. He went to, went to the school by a motor bus. Although the author and grandmother, both of them shared the same room in the city. But the mother, the grandmother couldn't spend the quality time with the author, which she used to spend with him in the village. Besides, the English schools, they taught about modern things of science and all. Pythagoras theorem and then world being round and other things and the grandmother was actually uh, not, not that much illiterate so that she could have helped the author so she, she felt unable she felt the kind of handicap at that time because she couldn't help him in his studies and of course she couldn't accompany him to the school also so the quality time was cut short curtailed However, uh, every morning she kept on preparing him for the school. Now the relationship moved into another phase and one day the author came back from the school and made an announcement that he was being given music lessons in the school. And before that one more thing which was left, God, I mean uh, the grandmother was not happy with the English schools because they don't teach about the religion, the God. So she was not happy with, with such kind of schools. Then coming to that music part, the author came and made an announcement that they were being given music lessons. Now the grandmother had the strong objection. You can say that she was orthodox. She was, uh, she might be having old kind of thinking because she, she strongly believed that music is not made for gentle folks. Music is not made for the children of good families because music has lewd associations. Lewd means a very mean kind of association. She believed that music is the monopoly of the beggars and the harlots. Harlots are the girls with, who are singing on in a different environment. So, she believed that music, music is not meant for good people. It's just for the beggars and the hundreds or the prostitutes. They are the ones who can sing, who sing music. She was not happy with the author's decision. And remember, the author made an announcement. <clears throat> he didn't ask for permission. Grandmother didn't protest. I mean, didn't say, she didn't say anything. And the author decided to learn music against her will and it resulted into another setback for the author because she really talked to him after that. Now she, she got herself engaged in working on the spinning wheels for the whole day. And in the city also she proved that she was religious by nature because in the city she used to provide crumbs of bread to hundreds of sparrows every afternoon for half an hour in the corridor of course on the courtyard now those hundreds of sparrows would come there they would start chirping together it created a bedlam kind of thing a lot of confusion some of them sat on her head some of them some of them sat on her shoulder but she never shooed them away she, she was she just 
kept on rebuking them in a friendless manner, that means in a, in a, in a, rebuking in a, in a very soft manner, but she never showed her anger. And this half an hour used to be the, the best half an hour for her in the city. And of course, she present, I mean, she showed her quality of being a truly religious person because she not only took care of the humans, that is the author, but she also took care of the stray dogs in the village, the sparrows in the cities. That shows the beauty of her heart. That's why the author said that, well, she might not have been uh, very pretty, but she was always beautiful. Now, after some time, another disastrous phase came in their relationship or in their friendship. The author grew up and he went up to the university and for, for his, um, to, in order to give him a private space for his studies and all, he was given his separate room for, for studies and living. The author reacted saying that the common link of our friendship was snapped. And what was the common link? The room which they shared. Although grandmother didn't talk to him, but still they could see each other every day. Now this was curtailed and he was given a separate room. There is a beautiful line. The grandmother accepted her seclusion with resignation. Seclusion means getting secluded, getting separated. And she accepted that with resignation. That means she resigned for the situation. She didn't protest against the decision. She simply accepted that decision. And this is how the common link was snatched. In the next phase of their relationship, the author decided to go abroad for five years for higher studies. Five years separation from the author, unacceptable to her. She was sad, she was disappointed, she was not happy. But now she had learned to control her emotions. She was very sad in, uh, from inside, but she never let those feelings appear on her face. She was just normal. She went to the railway station to see off the author as he was going abroad for five years. On the railway station, uh, on the platform, she kissed him on his forehead. <clears throat> the author was pretty worried because grandmother was so old that he was sure that when he would come back after five years, maybe she, she would not remain alive. And um, it, it was quite practical because she was, she was very old. And when he left, then he, he cherished the moist imprint of the kiss on his forehead to be the last sign of physical contact with his grandmother. But did the situation change? Absolutely not. The author came back after five years from abroad. Grandmother was still there on the platform ready to receive him and she was looking not even a day older. Just the same as he had left her five years ago. She hugged him very hard. She was so happy. And while she hugged him, the author heard her still of saying her prayers. Grandmothers, again on the same day, on that day also, she fed those sparrows for half an hour. In the evening, a change came upon her. You remember grandmother going against author's decision to learn music. Now the same grandmother, she had a change in perception. She gathered the women of neighborhood. And then she got an instrument uh, of, with sagging skin and, and all and she started playing that. And she, with the other women of the neighborhood, she started singing songs. Same grandmother, about 15-16 years ago, she was deadly against music. But now she was singing with other women. So this is a change in perception with the passing of time. And you know what the theme of those songs were? The homecoming of the warriors. 
in the earlier days when the warriors the soldiers when they went to to when they attacked on some other country and after winning the battle when they used to come back to their own country such songs were sung in their glory so she was also singing such kind of songs to welcome him back to 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 her city she sang for about uh, sang for about 3 to 4 hours then then the people in in the house they did told her asked her not to overstrain herself because it was not good for her to sing for 3 4 hours next morning she had a mild fever the doctor came and said it's okay she will be fine but as i told you she was a truly religious person she was quite close to the god and she knew that her death was approaching so she she stopped talking to anyone she said no this is the last moment of my life and i can't waste my time so i just want to get back to my prayers so she took the rosary in her hand started telling the beads one or two minutes the rosary fell off her hand her hands fell down and a white squalor was there on her face and then all of them realized that she was dead so she died at an extremely old age and look at the way she died without feeling even a smallest the smallest amount of pain she just had a peaceful death she had the a kind of feeling that she was going to die very soon and top of that she waited for the author for 5 years to come back she could manage to hold her breath for the author's come back as per the custom uh, her body was kept on the ground for other people to come and see then after the usual wailings and crying and mourning for about 2 3 hours then people left to make preparations for her funeral when they came back after some time a unique sight was there in the courtyard around her dead body there were thousands of sparrows and they were just sitting quiet not even a single sparrow was speaking anything look at the way her death it was not mourned by the humans only it was mourned by the birds the sparrows whom whom she used to feed every afternoon then the author's mother she felt pity for them and she just broke some crumbs of bread and uh, just provided to the sparrows and can you believe it not even a single sparrow touched those crumbs of bread when her dead body was taken out from there all the sparrows flew out quietly now this is the end of the chapter the portrait of a lady a beautiful chapter it talks about the height of human relationship it talks about how a grandmother can be devoted to her grandson the relationship of the two the friendship of the two went through several phases but their feelings for each other never changed they remain attached to each other till the last breath of the grandmother so this is all about this chapter the portrait of a lady guys i hope you you would have liked this story a beautiful story an emotional story it often makes me cry but when i write it a person will feel the moments so guys that's it from this chapter so i would once again request you to please like and subscribe my channel i'll be coming up with more videos of about the lessons in my next video i'm just going to talk about a beautiful poem by robert frost that would not take me although this poem is about the class 9 standard but trust me this poem is more about our own lives 
In that work, I'll be talking about the very, very important topic, making choices in life and the best of all, making the best choice in life. So please do watch that video on Road Not Taken. I'll be coming up with this video in a very short duration. So with this, thank you guys. Thank you very much for watching and thank you.